This is the making of my post-apocalyptic car for my Canterbury College Year 2 Extended Project. For my project, I decided to make a Mad Max style post-apocalyptic car that would be used in a driving post-apocalyptic game similar to the Mad Max game. I followed this tutorial by a, a guy with the channel name CO1E as my previous attempts of making a car failed quite badly and I used his tutorial which showed me better ways of creating the car using planes, bridging and symmetry tools. I started off by creating two cylinders to make the wheel wells and I cut out the sides and the edges of them so I had the exact wheel well areas that I can that I had on this template that I put on here. I turned it into an editable poly so I could mould it to the exact shape and then I copied it over. I then used the bridge tool to bridge the two sections together to create this part, this side. And then I also used the line tool so I selected the line on the edge and then shift dragged it to copy the lines over so I could extend it at each side. I then did the same the same progress to create the side of the car by following the template lines. I dragged it up and molded it to the right shape. After that I decided to I used the top down view and followed the guidelines that were on the bottom to create the the roof, the back and the the front of the car using the same shift drag technique on the lines and I created these angles here which I later changed because they weren't quite at the right angle but I created them using the vertice editor on the editable poly. I then used the symmetry tool to join up either side at exactly the same and which also mirrored it down the middle and welded it down the middle as well. I then filled in the gaps of the bonnet and the roof and the bed of the truck and extended these down so it would actually join at the bottom. I also then removed the windows as I wanted to be able to make an interior to the car. I also created a, a basic floor and dashboard to the car that I would later put more detail into and I started on the wheel arches of the car. I used a sphere, turned it into an edible poly, deleted the parts I didn't need and stretched and shaped it to the right shape. I then copy pasted them to each side and created the inset for the front bumper or the front grille. I then created these wheels and finished the basic body and I created the front grille using simple box shapes and the front lights using simple cylinder shapes. The um, wheel was made using a chamfer cylinder which I cut the middle out of and bridged and I then shrunk that one down made an inset to it which made the, the actual hub for the wheel and a normal cylinder in the middle and these were just boxes that I shaped using the edible poly. I then unwrapped it to apply a texture and I had a bit of a problem while doing this which was this strip down here is just the main middle of the tyre which worked fine but the actual side of the tyre this side is the outside but this interior part which is all jagged was the other side of the tyre it unwrapped strangely and I had to fix that by unwrapping it again and selecting either side separately and using the quick planar map tool and just overlaying them so they had the same texture. This is the texture that I made this is a this was using a basic two separate tyre textures that I got from textures.com and I think I also had a bump map on that as well so I applied the, uh, that into a material and then applied it onto the tyre. Then I decided to unwrap the actual car itself which was very difficult as it would select just strange parts of the vehicle. This was one of the hardest parts of my project as I, I didn't know how to fix it. Uh, as you can see this is what it would select when I would select it from the left hand side of the car. It would select loads of polys on the right hand side of the car and it would uh, select these random polys in the middle at a weird angle. I put that on hold for a while and I, cr I started creating a bumper. As you can see here here's the finished texture for the tyre which worked quite well. 
and a basic rubbery texture for the wheel guards. I also made a basic logo and put some textures on the lights. The bumper was made using a box shape with quite high poly mesh and uh, editable poly and just forming it to the right size and shape using the template on the bottom and the side. I copied it and mirrored it on the other side and it worked quite well. This was the car at that point so for the main body of the car I just threw a basic texture on which kind of worked for that time. It was just sort of a scratched metal texture which looked okay. The, the front grille look, was looking good, the lights looked okay, they were just a cylinder with the only the front bit unwrapped and the texture just thrown on there. The badge here was made out of a cylinder and a couple of skewed box shapes that were in here with the metal texture on. The bumper looked good with the same texture as the arch covers and the tyres and wheels looked very good as well. I then started working on the rear lights. For this I just used a chamfer box and bended it into shape using the editable poly and as I unwrapped it I um, selected the side that I wanted and unwrapped this side as well so I would have either side and just copied that onto here so they would have the same texture as the yellow light would continue along around here and the red light would continue along around here and the reverse light would continue along. I then started working on the seats. The seats in the final model wouldn't really be seen but they were quite nice to have as it meant that I didn't need to make solid windows and you can actually have an interior to the car. They were made using chamfer boxes again and using the template behind I, I made it into an edge poly, bended it into shape and extended it out into the right shape. They're a bit more simple than the template at the bottom but they were good enough for what I wanted. So I, I copied them over, I made the back of the seat as well which was quite simple, only like three polys at the front and a similar technique of making that bit, these were just copied over onto there, so I had two seats. The steering wheel was made using a torus shape and I used the extrude, I used the extrude to extend out in these parts, pull it into the middle and uh, then create this part which was just a um, very low poly cylinder and pull that out to make the, the shaft of the steering wheel. This is the unwrap for that. As I unwrapped it, it got quite complicated, so these parts, this main part here, that's obviously the front of the steering wheel, and all of these are the outer parts. This is the unwrap for the uh, for the seats. All I had to do was make it so none of the textures were stretched, as I didn't need to have any complex textures on this. So all I did was I uh, unwrapped it in a way that would stop any of the parts being stretched using the quick planar map, and that worked completely fine used a texture from textures.com which was a simple fabric texture so and that looked fine. I then went back and uh, as when I put the seats in I found out that the floor of the car that I made before was way too high so I had to go back and move it down. The problem with that is it yet again broke the unwrap I previously made that wasn't working very well to begin with and it disabled the, uh, the symmetry temporarily. As you can see here, the black parts are the parts of the car that weren't unwrapped properly. I also created the rear bumpers using the same technique as the front bumpers, just making chamfer boxes and extruding and copying them out, pulling them out. After I fixed this problem by just putting another unwrap on, the unwrap was still slightly broken, which I had to fix at a later date. But I just turned the mirror tool back on and it was working for then. I then started creating the uh, front lip that you can see kind of here on the template. I just used the pyramid tool and I screwed it out at one side of it to make it long enough. Unwrapped it so the textures weren't stretched as they were here. See all the textures are stretched here and then extruded it out so they were all even and popped it into place, dragged out the vertices so it matched properly with the actual body of the car and then I mirrored it, so it would on both sides. I then went back to try and figure out what was wrong with the unwrap, and this was where the, the normals, so the textures of the actual polys were facing. The way it was looking was way too long, but that wasn't the problem. The problem was that quite a lot of the textures were flipped, and they were facing the wrong direction. So I tried using the two-sided tool, 
and that kind of worked for a while, but it wouldn't work in the render. All of these polys that are in darker, where they've selected, are flipped the wrong direction. So these lighter te these lighter ones are facing towards the camera, and these darker ones are facing away. So I had to go through them, and I had to flip them the correct direction. Something I also found is that uh, all of these uh, black areas are facing away, and the light areas are facing towards the camera. As you can see here on the bonnet, this bit's all black, this, but this bit's white. So these ones were facing away. And I had to go back and I had to flip them. But even that didn't fix the problem. I put I again put that on hold as I was getting increasingly confused about how to fix it. So instead I decided to try and make the the glass for the windows. So I created a cube, made it into an editable poly. And I formed it into the shape of where the glass would have been in the car. Moulded around the windows, curved it at the front, put it in the right place. And I tried to make a glass texture for it, but... I found this very hard. All of my uh, options of using ray tracer and material options wouldn't work for the start, but then I, after I had researched a bit, I found out a way of making it work in the render. So the render actually views it as glass, whereas when you're just in the program, it just views it as this shiny black surface. I then decided to go back and try and figure out how to fix the... Uh, problems I was having with the unwrap and the wrong sided polys so I decided using a basic cube and I was going to use the same progress method that I used on making the actual car itself so I made the basic cube I deceit, uh, deleted certain sides I then used the shift drag option to extend it out deleted sides again and used the mirror tool to fix it together and that worked fine so the problem I was having was that, as you can see on parts of this, this is where I found out that the problems I was having was what I didn't realise is you couldn't actually have any of these black sides the, because the model was folded over but not connected. I had to make it so it was a solid model, otherwise it wouldn't render properly, you couldn't unwrap it properly. You couldn't have textures on the inside and outside. There were loads of problems with it. So I had to go back and delete multiple parts of the inside and the bed. And parts of it were just not connected. So the bed of the truck just clips through the back of here. And it's just hidden inside the back. And I thought that would be fine because you wouldn't see it so it wouldn't matter. But it made loads of problems for the unwrap and the render issues. So I had to go back and I had to make all of these parts double-sided by using the same shift-drag techniques, moving it out, welding the vertices together, and this took quite a long time. So I had to go through and delete all of this back area and then redo it in a way that would actually connect and would actually make a solid model. Quite a few of the vertices weren't even attached, even though they looked like they were from far away. So I had to select them and then I had to use the weld tool to weld them back together. This then meant that the unwrap worked much better. I could actually select the side I wanted, I could use the quick planar map to actually get that side in the VW edit, and I could then use that to apply the textures I wanted. I took a long time unwrapping each separate part because I had to select them, deselect the parts I didn't want, select each face separately, unwrap them, put them in areas so I would actually remember what parts were which, so this is the finished unwrap. This then allowed me to actually put a decent texture on that wasn't stretched and wasn't broken. After I had put all of the textures in, into the right size, I could then create a decent texture and put it on it. However, I found out the parts I had put in, like the main big parts of the car, like the sides and the, and the roof and the back were way too small so I had to then extend them up and put the less important parts of the car like the bottom and the wheel arches and I had to make them smaller in the texture mapping area and make the more important parts bigger so I could have a high res higher resolution texture on those parts. This is how I ended up having it. The ender, although it now worked, was very very dark so I had to go into light lister setting and just increase the global level of the light up to something like 200 which made you actually be able to see it in the render. The problem with this is when you went back into the normal 3ds Max program everything was way too bright. 
this was uh, the unwrap that I then took into Photoshop as a PNG, so it was transparent, so the only parts that you could see were the green and white lines. I made that as a separate layer here and a black layer behind so you could easily see it. And then I started applying textures onto the model, which I then had to rasterize to actually be able to move around. I then um, moved and erased the parts that I didn't need so, and I then got this blue paint texture and applied it onto all of the normal painted parts of the car and I got this wooden texture both from textures.com to apply onto the bed of the car. I then also got the rubber texture again that I had before and I used that for the, the wheel wells and the underneath. I was also putting that on the interior of the car but what I didn't realise is that is that inside my unwrap I had the interior of the roof and the outside of the roof flipped. I didn't realise I had one of them on the wrong side so I ended up having the interior colour on the outside so I just ended up going into the, the unwrap and moving them manually so it mapped the texture into the right place. Then this happened. I don't know what caused it. I think the computer I was using was just lagging out so it just made everything render very odd and didn't look at the right side, didn't like render one side and then render the inside and then everything melted down and kind of broke and I think 3ds Max crashed so I had to restart it but then the car was done at that point so luckily everything saved properly and I had finished the, the basic car at that point I saved it as a separate model and I started working on, I then copied it and started working on a um, the Mad Max aspect of it. So I had the street version and then I started making it into the Mad Max version. So I removed the front bumper and I started creating metal poles to come out of the front, out of the underneath of the front bumper to connect onto a big ram that I was going to put at the front, sort of like a snow plow. So I created some cylinders and a box. I then made it into an edible poly and started bending into the right shape and using the soft select tool to make it curved and uh, dragging out the, the faces and deleting those faces so when I used, I used the symmetry tool it would weld it together in the middle. I then used the soft selection tool to drag it out further, uh, further forward so it would be more pointed for the actual plow shape to be mounted onto and I started working on the plow shape itself. I was going to only make the left hand side and then I was going to use the symmetry tool to mirror it onto the other side. I used just a normal box with a couple of medium amount of polys onto it and I started looking at reference images. So I was using this slightly low resolution reference image to use as the basis of plow. So I wanted it to curve up like a snow plow. So the idea was that they had got it in the post-apocalyptic wasteland they had found uh, a snow plow and mounted it to the front of the car and welded a load of spikes onto it so they would be able to push away other cars, spike people and basically make their car a lot stronger. I tried using the bend tool but it was bending always in the wrong direction. Any of the angles I wanted it was either it would either bend this way or it would kind of bend through itself. All three of the axes wouldn't bend in the right direction so I had to lay it down flat and make it much longer so it would actually bend in the direction I wanted it to so I turned the entire model over and then when I bent it it would bend in the right direction so I then used the edit bolly to manually so it was bending this way um, top down and then I started using the edit poly to make it bend up and over the top of the bonnet so it would mould to the top of the bonnet so it went down to the floor and then over the front of the car. I then used the symmetry and mirror tool um, on all of the, the parts I had made and I, looking back on it, I think this works quite a bit better than the way I then had it because I moved it over more and it had this sort of shape which wasn't connected to the front so what I ended up doing is I just used the edit poly tool and I welded these vertices at the front to actually make the point there. And I then attached it to the front of the car. The whole plow was way too thin and went too far back. So it was clipping through the front of the car. I then used the, the stretch tool, stretched out sideways. 
and I started molding these edges here so that the headlights weren't being clipped through and what by doing that all of these back vertices and lines were getting quite messy and in the wrong places so I had to go back and fix those and straighten them all up so I moved these down and it kind of ended up with this sort of large top to it and sort of lower sides that bended down around the headlights and I then extended out these parts so they are stretched around the sides of the car itself so it had some protection around the sides and this main bash bar at the front I then started wondering about the wheels of the car and I was going to start making the back of the car much higher much uh, more raised up at the back than the front as it would give that rakish angle that makes the car look like it's moving even when it's parked as quite a lot of the Mad Max vehicles have that it also gives them a lot more ground clearance in the back but I put that on hold for now as these wheels weren't really suitable and I wasn't quite sure how to do it at this point so I went back and started adding some sp simple spikes to the front of the ram using just a, uh, the pyramid objects and just copying them and moving them into place all along the front of the car and then selected this side and just mirrored it so they went onto the other side as well and then applied the the same original metal texture that I had onto the front and it, it worked quite well I then started working on a, a, a mounted weapon onto the roof so I um, was going to create a harpoon gun so I had the base for the uh, the stalk, the, the mounting system. I then created the, the body of the harpoon gun itself by just using a, a cylinder. And I turned it into an edible poly, molded it into a sort of flatter shape, and then started making these mounting brackets that would go onto the bottom. And then these panelling, uh, also made out of just box shapes that I then molded round the side of the gun itself and I used the soft selection tool to move that back into place and created the actual gun and the sight on the top all using the editable poly mode and moving the vertices around to create the shape I wanted and basic details onto it using box shapes box objects and cylinder objects and then I started working on the handle using box objects again the soft selection tool to move out the mirror tool and copying to get either side of the handle and just a cylinder to make the actual handle itself I use the extrude tool to create the trigger or the trigger mounting system and another cylinder to uh, using the a cylinder and the soft selection tool and I created the trigger I then wanted, uh, wanted to create the actual harpoon for the gun itself and I started off using a cone for a spike but that didn't work very well after some uh, input from my peers I started using the uh, pyramid tools again made them very thin so they were like cut up sheet metal and used two of those inside each other to create like a double pyramid spike and then I wanted to have extra hooks that would come off the bottom. I, I first used box boxes, but they wouldn't they didn't work very well. So instead, I just stretched them out from the pyramids themselves, and that ended up working quite well. I got this quite spiky, thin harpoon itself. I then damaged the car a bit by making one of the wing mirrors look like it was falling off, and then went on to creating a jerry can to go onto the side of the car that would hold extra fuel so I looked at some reference images found the right sort of shape and then used a chamfer box and edible poly mode to bend the box into the right shape using the, another box with lots of vertical polys to it and bending that into the right shape to make the handle and a cylinder for the, the cap put basic colors on them and went on to work on the wheels uh, the previous wheels I had looked too modern and too sporty or like sort of a, a street wheel rather than something that would be used in the post-apocalyptic world so I made I was going to make a steel wheel so I started creating a flat 
almost hubcap using very small cylinders and selected the outer ring and the inner ring to bend it into the right shape so it went out and then in that would give that sort of shape of the steel wheel. I then unwrapped that so it would have the actual texture on the right place, got a texture of a wheel from textures.com, an old rusty steel wheel, put that on and resized the unwrap accordingly so it would be at the right size, moved that up a bit so you didn't have the sides of it anymore or gaps and then doubled up the rear wheels and moved out the front wheels so you would have a more off-road looking vehicle, off more off-road capable vehicle and started using the dynamic objects to create the suspension which was really handy as it which made it possible to instantly or really really quickly create suspension because they already had springs and dampeners that this is the dampener uh, for the suspension that you just create as an object and these are the springs that you have loads of different options for that you can just make and pull up and have as many coils as you want and then just put around the dampener and then you instantly have decent looking suspension for the car. I then wanted to create the, the steering knuckles and the actual parts that hold on the wheels so I made a box, used the soft selection, moulded that down, started bending out either side cut out the interior part, the bridge tool to up off all of these holes and moved it into place. So it was holding the suspension here and that part went into the actual wheel itself. Although this part was way too long and had low, just too many extra vertexes there. So I just removed them and welded them back together, bridged them back together even. This was one of the reference images I was looking at to get a better idea of the suspension. So you've got the dampener in here and the spring coil and then the actual arm of the wheel here that holds on the wheel. I then found some textures for rusted metal and applied these to the, the suspensions. You have more rusted steel metal and then the rusted al aluminium or uh, rusted shinier metal here for the interior uh, for the inside and the dampers and the rusty metal for the springs. I then doubled up the suspension and test fitted them and then started creating some basic cylinders that were used for the drive lines, the uh, drive shaft of the car. And then I connected those up, mirrored it over and created a uh, a transfer box. Uh, I then did the same for the rear of the car so I had the doubled up wheels thicker and bigger suspension and thicker drive lines and a much bigger transfer box which then joined up to the middle transfer box. I then figured out that because the back wheels were so big they stuck out way too far and after getting feedback from some of my peers they said that it looked silly so I decided to pull out the, the rear wheel arches and made them wider although when I went back to the Adipal Poly and started moving stuff around, it broke the unwrap again. So after I pulled out the arches and fixed the unwrap, the wheels fit much better. And I started working on extending the over fenders or the fenders. Uh, so I moved them more into place to actually fit with the new extended rear fenders. This is what the car looked like at this point. I decided that the the interior of the wheels, uh, the hubs of the wheels, wasn't working very well. What I had used before was the, the, the tyre shape shrunk down and put inside and with a metal texture on it. But the problem with that is it had sidewalls to it. So they the sidewalls clipped, at some angles, clipped through the wheel, the tyres of the cars. Didn't look very good. So I then decided to use just a basic tube with a metal texture on it, put to the right size and put inside the tyre, which then worked. I then made some step bars for the side of the car using the cylinders and the bend tool, copied those over, moved them into place and copied that whole part over to the other side and mirrored it. Then I wanted to go back to the, the bonnet of the car and I wanted to open up the bonnet so I could create a 3D engine and put that inside. The problem with that is again, whenever you go back into the edit poly mode here, it breaks anything that's above it. The symmetry will just be toggled on or off, but the unwrap usually breaks. So I had to, I did that, moved the whole thing down, 
and the whole unwrap was broken. So I had to go back and unwrap everything. And I used the checker pattern checker, which was actually really helpful because it meant I could check that all the checkers were exactly square, which made that which meant sure that the textures would apply uh, evenly and also check that they were the same sizes and also whichever parts didn't have the checkers on I knew weren't unwrapped at that point. This is why I ended up with the new unwrap. All of the underneath and the interior I overlaid on top of each other because they were going to have the same texture that didn't really matter where it was put on because they weren't seen very much. So that had the interior, the underneath, the wheel wells and all of that and the rest of this was mostly the same although I had an extra part for the bonnet itself so this is what the texture looked like after that and it looked pretty good but it didn't look dirty enough uh, for the apocalypse so what I did is I went back into the photoshop file and used the burn tool to make it darker which did work well but then I thought about using the putting an extra extra layer of um, texture underneath and using the opacity tool I had this scratched layer underneath and the main layer with slightly lower opacity so the scratches showed through and then I made a spec map for it by turning the whole thing black and white and making it so that the um, white parts would be more shiny and this is what it turned out uh, turned out as which looked really good it looked like it had been uh, like burnt slightly or it had been painted with dirt and dust so I went on to create the engine made out of just three normal boxes and some chamfer cylinders on top to make the, the head covers some chamfer boxes at the bottom for the oil pan and the cylinders on the top were used for the throw bodies and then I created a, a supercharger. So I had the supercharger here made out of just a basic chamfer cylinder and the blower also made out of a chamfer cylinder that was squashed at one side but it didn't look curved enough at the front. So I went in and manually curved all of the vertexes. Um, so this is what it looked like before and this is what it looked like after and that ended up looking pretty good. I then threw on the textures that I had. These were ones that I had used before which just worked completely fine. Scratch metal, rusty metal and painted, old painted red. Then I wanted to create the hand belts and the supercharger belt. I got a picture of a supercharger belt pulley, uh, unwrapped that and put it onto the front and copied those three times and resized them for the different pulley belts. Uh, uh, for the different pulleys and then I made the belt itself out of one long box with lots of extra height segments and drew a used a, the line line tool or the path tool drew the right shape and then used the path to form to to form that object onto the right place and then use the percent and stretched tools to mold it into place put the same rubber texture on it and that worked fine. I then moved the engine back out of the engine bay so I could work on the exhaust pipes. This was using just the tubes and the bend tool and just copy pasted multiple times and unwrapped so that um, the rusty texture looked good on them and that also worked well. Then I wanted to create extra fuel tanks for the back so I got so I made some basic cylinders, unwrapped them, took that unwrap into Photoshop, got some textures of barrels and put them on, which again worked well apart from this part which was stretched strangely. So I unwrapped that, sec se unwrapped that separately, reformed that part into the same unwrap and then moved them into place and I hid the more ugly parts of the unwrap. Uh, by just rotating these parts then created this back bar using the same rusty texture and the same bent cylinders from earlier that I had on the sides and I just copied them over and resized them to work as the back bash bar and this spare wheel was just one of the normal front wheels just copy pasted here these back sort of ladders were again just these but made smaller I then decided to create some roll bars for the for the truck itself and these were made using cylinders the bend tool 
and selection with the editable poly mode and with the same rusty texture and copy pasted over to the other side with uh, the mirror. I then wanted to unwrap and texture the jerry can so I unwrapped either side, overlaid them on top of each other and got the sides and the edges put there, put them into Photoshop with the uh, same red rusty texture that I had before, used the colour replacement tool and I made them green. Uh, when I put them back on, I noticed something very strange that the unwrap had sort of deformed on one side and had broken completely on the other side. So instead of having them on the sides, I put them in these areas inside the, the bed of the truck as you wouldn't be able to see the sides of them, so it wouldn't matter. Then I made some thunder sticks, which were the sort of thrown javelins, explosive javelins in Mad Max, and they're sort of a staple of the Mad Max cars. So I decided to make these using the cylinders and the uh, noise modifier, which I used to cr make them slightly bent so they didn't look in uh, just completely straight. And I also used the cylinder um, on the end using multiple other modifiers that I were, was experimenting with to see if they worked better. But the, the noise tool worked much better to make something look slightly dented and broken. And then textured and put them in with all slightly different textures. One of them using uh, leather texture, one of them using snakeskin texture, and another one using um, the tyre texture they had before. Uh, just wrapped around them as they worked quite well. And the tops were just using previous rusty textures or metal textures that I had. And... That was my finished car. I uh, duplicated the thunder sticks again, so I had three on each side. And I also created a slightly different variation of the front with some bash bars and a roll cage that went over the entirety of the car. It went, it goes along the top over this bit, connects up here, and then goes down the side here. Oh, and I also created this front panel for the windscreen. That is my finished product. That is my extended product. Thank you for watching.